Hey, I don't get to say this very often. <laughs> this video is actually sponsored. What's up, YouTube? Graver here, and yes, this video is technically sponsored because without um, Moose Mods actually providing the kit for this blaster, this video wouldn't have happened. So, long story short on how this came about, I made my uh, Pew Pew inspired Fallout laser pistol, and I also recently reviewed the Moose 2 uh, designed by Moose Mods, and I got reached out by Eric the Moose, and he said, hey, I really love what you did with the Fallout pistol. Do you want an elk to do that too? And I'm like, yes. Yes, I do. Because for those who don't know what the elk is, it is a pullback 3D printed blaster designed by Eric the Moose. And it has actually a bunch of different iterations. Um, a couple that I've kind of asked him about which may be coming but I'm not going to say what they are because they're in development but of the ones that he has out there is the standard version uh he made some ones based on um Alucard's pistols from Helsing and he's also done two versions of the 10 millimeter pistol from Fallout more specifically Fallout 4 and uh, 76 so that is what I got sent I got I was provided the 3D printed parts and the hardware kits, so rather than just constantly talking about it, let's go to the workbench and take a look at what was given to me. All right, so here we are at the workbench, and here is the elk sent to me by Moose Mods for this video. Now, I was given the option of uh, either getting the pistol sent to me built or put it together myself. I figured do it, put it together myself because one, I could show the assembly of it. And then also two, um, I thought it would be easier to actually paint up like this, but seeing all the little pieces and everything, um, I may live to regret my decision. However, I think this is still going to work out just fine. Um, the main parts of the pistol are the lower receiver, your upper slide, which has your plunger, which is where obviously that's all going to go. Uh, the lower section is going to be your breech and also your barrel. So that piece would just slide in back there. And then the front muzzle, which has a uh, bearing scar built into it, which is going to be really kind of cool. And that just goes on right up front here. Um, I'm not pushing too hard into it because this is a very, very, very tight fit. And I don't want to get the, um, the muzzle stuck on it before, you know, beforehand and such. So, so what my plan is going to be is I'm going to put this together and, um, prop it up much like I did with the laser pistol. Uh, so I'm going to paint this all up get it nice and weathered and then not only will it be a functional blaster but it will make a nice prop now one thing i'm going to do different than what i did on the laser pistol because the laser pistol you can tell it kind of doesn't look like anything real steel this is going to potentially look kind of realistic so for that reason i am going to leave the front muzzle orange however when i do the uh, weathering on it, I am going to still weather this. Uh, so it's going to get dirty and all that kind of stuff, but for safety reasons, and usually most cons want them on there anyway, um, especially something like this, I'm going to leave this orange. So there's that. I know nine times out of 10, I usually don't do that, but sometimes better to be safe than sorry. So, yeah, I'm going to start uh, cleaning up the pieces. Uh, I'm mo I have to say, for the most part, this is a very, very clean print. Uh, nothing too egregious externally or really internally. 
Uh, I just want to clean up some of the things because I want to avoid like that that 3D print uh, screech. So I'm going to work that up. Uh, this is going to be a process though. I can tell you this right now because even with what I start on and everything, like the lower receiver is going to take me a little longer because I want to do the grips up uh, separately from the blaster because I, I, in my head right now, it just seems like it's going to be easier. But because of that, then I'm going to have to take, I'm going to have to either wait painting on this or paint this, wait for everything to dry, um, fit it so that I can do the glue up on this and then wait for that to dry before I could probably move into assembly and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to start on the cleanup and then I will get the, I'll, uh, once everything is all painted, I will do an assembly. And then once it's all together, that's when I'm going to weather it. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So, all right. So I'm going to start cleaning this up because I know no one's going to want to see that. I will see you in a moment. Okay, so I'm on day two of the Fallout pistol build, and I think because of, it was kind of humid when I was painting a little bit today, um, either that or I may not have uh, shaken my, um, that new Phantom Grey up enough, but something happened that was a bit of a, I want to say happy accident. So little preview here is the lower portion of the uh, pistol and here I already have the uh, side grips glued on although I'm a little worried up here is not sticking out but it's a little pop out but I think it should be okay it's all the way up here should be blocked it's fine but on this side of the it's not so much pronounced on this side, although you can still see it. You can really kind of see it on this side, but like the metal, the metallic finish, like it's weird. It's like it kind of got buffed out a little bit. Like I can rub my finger on it and it brings back some of the sheen, but not all of it. But I'm kind of liking this idea because it kind of gives it a tarnished look. And I mean, this thing is supposed to be, you know, post-apocalyptic. So either sitting in a vault or at a, you know, a police station or an army base or something. I mean, in essence, it would have tarnish on it besides, you know, all of the, uh, the scuffs and the rust and all that kind of stuff. So this was kind of a happy accident and I just wanted to kind of show it off here. So, um, I've actually kind of done what I wanted to for today. Everything is basically painted at this point. Um, I'm just going to let the glue here, um, holding down the grips set overnight. Um, I had this, I had it clamped down, uh, just to make sure everything was actually staying put. Although I didn't think there, um, one, this one scale was a little warped, so I was trying to offset the back end by putting a clamp here and in S and unfortunately I kind of offset it by knocking that one up a little bit, but it's fine. Uh, but yeah, so principal painting is technically done now. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm actually going to figure out, do I want to dry fit everything? and weather then clear coat or assemble everything or clear coat what I have assemble everything and then weather because I mean if I don't clear coat the weather and some of it starts coming off it's honestly it's going to be fine but I got to figure out how I want to play this part out now so that's going to probably take me a day or so um, for you it's going to be nothing because uh, whatever I do next is going to be coming up next. But yeah, I just got to figure out my game plan at this point. So you'll see where that goes in a moment. And okay, so I clear coated, 
but I was going to clear coat and now we are going to move into assembling this. So a couple of things of what's going to be going on. One, I have all of my parts ready to go that are going, that have been painted, that are getting assembled and all that kind of stuff. Um, I was told by uh, Eric that yes, this full spring is what's going to be um, used However, okay, sorry, needed to check my notes. Uh, so yeah, this end is going to be going towards the plunger. So it's going to basically assemble like this. So the flat end is going to be at the back end of everything. And the cut end is up here by the plunger. So what my plan is, is going to be, I'm going to be following along um, Moose Mod's actual build guide for this. Uh, so this way I can just kind of have it going, build as I go and such. Now, a couple of things. One, I'm not going to be recording over everything um, or voicing everything. I will probably do voiceover with um, time lapse probably. Uh, but if you really want a full breakdown of this thing, I'll have Eric's video. I'll have Moose Mod's video linked down below for the actual build itself. Uh, one thing I do want to make note of, while I did nothing with the orange front end of this, the bearing scar will be going in here, or is built in already. I just have to assemble it. I am not going to do that until the very last part of this because what I want to do is once everything is built that's when I'm going to weather and since I didn't do anything with the orange I am still going to weather it so I'm going to be hitting it with the nun oil um, I'm going to hit it with the um, Abrax shader with the um, the mud all that uh, you know whatever else I have or whatever paints I'm going to use I'll go to over that once I'm ready for it but I'm going to weather the orange bit because I still want it to be uniform. I don't want it to just have like this hard line of, you know, weathered, you know, super accurate looking uh, prop and then bam. So this is going to get weathered. I just didn't want to do it in the, um, the, uh, the phantom gray because, you know, it's safety and all that stuff. So I'm going to take all the parts out. I'm going to start the video and uh, we'll see how well this goes. Okay, so apologies that the installation part didn't go as well as I had hoped. Um, as you saw when this was all done, had a couple of hiccups, but it's all it's all good. So we're gonna start with the weathering on this now. So as I had said, I did not install the bearing scar yet because I want that to be. Um, literally the last thing I put in because I don't want the bearings to have, I don't want to gunk up the bearings with the weathering that I'm going to be doing. So we're going to be doing the pistol and both magazines because they do stick out quite a bit. Um, for weathering, I have some new stuff as well. So I'm going to have the stuff that I've normally been using um, from Citadel, the Agrax Earth Shader. Um, of course, tried and true none, uh, known oil. Uh, I have a little bit of the lead belcher. And of course, I also have the Strickland mud. Uh, to add to that, I'm going to see how well these work. I have plate mail metal and dark rust from war paints. Um, going to give those a shot, see how they do. And the general idea is not to um like go too crazy but just really put like a nice weathering on this like the nun oil and agrax shader is basically going to go over everything um the strickland mud and the dark rust will go into crevices like around here around the what in game i think would be like the safety switches and the select fire um that kind of stuff um and the lead belcher and plate mail are just going to be kind of highlighting areas that would 
take a lot of wear and tear like uh, the magazine release along the slide meet I'll, I'll probably put some highlight on the orange but really that's kind of it and then the same thing for the magazines it's just going to get like uh, probably a little highlight around the edges and then just like kind of light rust spots all over so I am not going to voice I'm not going to talk the entire time while I'm doing this I'm going to get myself set up with a little bit of water in here I have my brushes uh, a couple of q-tips if need be and actually a couple of sponge brushes as well and then I'll probably this I will actually time lapse and then I'll probably do voiceover work or music behind it I don't know whichever so with that let's get to this
Okay, so this went a little quicker than I thought it was going to be. Um, I guess aging something to look like an old piece of junk um, was a lot easier than I had anticipated. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with how this came out. Um, I mean, it may not be a one-to-one -one for, you know, an in-game asset, but I mean, over and all, it's pretty i think it's pretty damn good um last thing i need to do is i definitely want to put clear coat on this um just to kind of lock everything down uh yes i am going to clear coat it as is i'm not disassembling this thing and reassembling it just to clear coat it um hopefully the clear coat doesn't gunk up anything i don't think it's going to i'm going to be doing pretty light passes on everything um, I'm going to hang it by something or it's just going to be flat, do one side, flip it and get the other. Um, even the magazines. Now I didn't go all the way up just because, yeah, I did paint the whole thing to, you know, match and all. But I mean, when the magazine's in, you're only seeing like this part down and I think the magazine's definitely add to the you know the aged look of the pistol itself so i am going to put the clear on this and then i'm going to give my final thoughts on everything regarding so here we are with the final product um i'm just going to go over real quick how this thing actually works uh kind of give you my ups and downs about the build process uh, what I think of the overall final paint job and you know, we'll call it square at that. So uh, This is a pullback uh, top slide pistol Pull back the slide push it forward Pull the trigger and fire your dart uh, Now the one really neat thing about this is it does come with built-in scar barrels um, both this version and the full version of the 10 millimeter pistol will have them i think the bigger version has three bearings on each one so it's a nine bearing scar this is actually only a six bearing scar if that makes any big difference um over and all the build for this was not bad it actually went for the most part pretty smooth i had two hangups one was I was missing the bungee cord for this sear. Um, that was quickly remedied with a quick order from Amazon and no harm, no foul. That was taken care of. Uh, the one issue I really did have though was with the mainspring in here. That kind of gave me a problem because as everything came together, I knew the trigger and I knew the catch release worked. I knew the catch worked because you kind of need to prime um, basically kind of prime it and have the spring hold in order to get the back cap on because of the length of the spring. It's constantly pushing everything out. Um, but yeah, once it was all together, I could not get the catch to release to save my life. No matter how hard I pulled the trigger or what, it was not going anywhere. Uh, lo and behold, what I did was after trying to troubleshoot it, I thought it's got to be the spring pressure. It's just too much for this to push up on the catch because there's too much pressure pushing down on the catch so what i did was is i actually swapped it out for a slightly weaker weaker spring the spring length that did go in here is actually the same length of what i was sent maybe a coil or two longer uh, but it is flat on both sides and this thing works no problem I really thought that was going to hit me in the head. Uh, but with the spring provided, and as long as it can work right, uh, this is supposed to be hitting about 170 to 180 on average. Um, I've heard some people even saying it's a 200 FPS pistol. Uh, with the spring I have in here right now, it's hitting about 130, which I'm honestly fine with for a pistol because you're not trying to snipe people from across the field with a pistol. Pistols are really kind of CQB, and when you're in CQB, you don't want something that's hitting that hard and heavy. Um, plus, with 
where this is hitting right now, this is perfect for like HVZ games because most of those have usually have a hundred FPS, hundred and fifty FPS cap. Uh, I've never attended it, but I know Valor has went there a couple of times, and I would love to get there one year. Um, New Calanta down in the Carolinas, Fallout themed event. You know, chances are this would probably be perfect for it. Um, going over how my paint job came out, I'm very happy with how it how it turned out. Um, I'm glad I went with the lighter brown on the panels because it does pop better. I think if I had kept that darker color, that basically was what the 3D print was. I don't think I think it would have like kind of bled into everything too much. Um, the rust effect that I have on here, I'm, I'm honestly really happy with it because truthfully, the simple, you know, simple is better really worked out because all I used on it outside of the original, um, rattle cans is just those two Warhammer paints that I had gotten that, uh, plate steel and the, uh, the dirty rust or the dusty rust or whatever, the rust one. That's all that's really on here. And, okay, I did use the um, Nun Oil and um, Agrax Shader washes. But, I mean, paint, those are shaders. But paint-wise, in and of itself, I only added two extra colors to it. And it really does look so much better. Like, this looks like it was sitting in a vault for quite a long time. And I'm really happy with how it came out. Um, and also, best part about it is, even with all of the paints that I have on here, and I'm glad I kind of stopped here so none of it really went up, but the mag drop still works <laughs> wonderfully. Um, I'm honestly really happy with the pistol. This is a great design. Like I said, the build was not terrible with the two exceptions that I did run into, and one of them was just a missing part, which was much more easily remedied to fix than the zinc. Um, overall, I'm really happy with this. I'm really happy with the design, and I'm really looking forward to what other kind of iterations that Moose Mods is going to put, be putting out of this. But with that being said, that's where we're going to end it for this video. So as always, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of that. Or in the Fallout series, what's your favorite weapon to use? Right now, mine in 76 is the Enclave Flamer and Holy Fire, because, I mean, those are just honestly two of the best energy weapons in that game period, although I am pretty uh, uh, happy with the Gauss minigun as well, but I digress. So, oh, and don't forget to click that little bell icon, otherwise you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. So, again, thank you very much for joining me, and thank you again to Moose Mods for providing this kit for this video. So, until next time, later.